to my channel Everyday Excel and part two of my modern Excel dashboard tutorial. If you haven't watched my first video yet and you want to know how to build something like this, go check it out. Otherwise, I'm going to show you a few additional things you can do to increase how dynamic your dashboard is. Basically all the stuff that I forgot to do in the first video. What we're going to cover today will be a shorter video um, showing you how to link up dynamic headings for your graphs so they reflect what your data is filtered on and also things like an info box that you can have so someone can click on it and have a brief description of what's going on in the dashboard so they can use it without your assistance uh, and then just general tidying up. So let's get to it. So what I wanted to show you first is an easy one here. If we go to the dashboard that we built in the last video uh, one thing I forgot to do was remove blank categories within your filters just so it's a bit tidier. So I showed you in my first video uh, how, you, how to set up the data table and that for something like um, my employee numbers and employee divisions I had some blank rows here that I said don't matter. So when I created the slicer it still has these, this blank field here which we don't actually want. So what you can do is if you right click it Go to Slicer Settings and tick this box, Hide Items with No Data. Now it'll disappear and we've got our nice box. So that's number one ticked off. The next thing we want to do is to link up all our headings so that they're nice and dynamic and they reflect what we're currently filtered on. So we'll start here with the Revenue and EBITDA forecasts. What I'm going to do is copy this text, come to my Data tab, this is the pivot table that I set up for that graph in particular. So I'm going to put in here title and then I'm going to make this a formula and it's going to equal in quotes for the text revenue and EBITDA forecast and then I'll do a space end and if you use and you can create dynamic words in the cell. So we will do and the customer type. So what I want to do is I'm going to say if this cell equals all, so if it says all, then I don't want it to say anything. So value of true will be blank. Otherwise I want it to equal what's in there as well as a comma and a space. And then I'll close that off and then I'll do and and I'll do another if statement. And it will say if my product type equals all, then I again don't want it to say anything. Otherwise, tell me what it's filtered on. That's all we want for this one. Now we'll link up this heading here. So this is a text box. So we can delete what's in here. We'll go to our formula bar while we're inside the text box and we'll hit equals. And we'll come to our data tab and we'll link it to the cell. Then using one of your other headings, we'll format paint it and then we'll try it out. So if I click customer X, now it has customer X on the end and product one. So my text, uh, my text box is slightly too short for this. So I'm just going to have to extend my heading a little bit. And then what happens if none of my customers are selected, that piece disappears and it goes on revenue and EBITDA forecast product one. So we'll show you again here. We can go customer Y, customer X, product one, two, three, and it will change the headings. So what we're gonna do is repeat that for all of these. I'll speed that up a wee bit and I'll show you, uh, I'll show you one next one that has the year in it as well. And then after that, I'll speed it up. So product profitability. I'll copy paste that in here, which was this one here. So I will just move all of this stuff down, maybe a couple cells. And I'm going to have title here. Copy my text, put it in here, equals, paste it with a space, comma, if my year equals all then I want it to say nothing, otherwise tell me my year and give me comma space to space out my next thing. And then that's going to be and with if, it's not finished, 
if this equals all, then be blank. Otherwise, give me that customer type. Oops, this should be and. Product profitability 2018. That's, yeah, what I'll do is I'll put the and symbol actually. So I'll remove the comma off the end of my year and I'm going to put it on the front of this one instead. So it's going to say comma space and my customer type. So now product profitability equals 2018 will come through here and link it up. So I'll delete the text. This will equal that cell, which now says profitability 2018 will format paint it. And then if we filter by different customer type, it's going to have this on the end. So this one's fine now. If we change the years, or if this is all, then it'll just be customer X or customer Y. So I'll fast forward the next few just to speed this up. I'll chuck some filters on. 2018 and product two. So this is not long enough again. We'll extend this one out. And then now we've got this in the same format. Except this one's customer first, this one's product, so I'll switch them around. Now it's in the same format as this one here. Margin analysis is here. And I'll just take this from here. And I'll swap them all over. But I want this to be T10. T10, T10. T11 is product. Yeah, I want product first. T11. T11. T12 and T12. Oh, it goes customer then product. So T12. 12, T11, T11. This equals that. Format painter. And we have to drag it out. And may have to line a few things up a little bit. Cool. And then employees will be employee division. So title equals employees and if this equals all, then I want it to say all, but I don't want it to have the brackets. So I'll just say all. Otherwise, tell me what's in it. So employees all, come back to my dashboard, delete this, and this can equal this cell. Format paint it, and now we have a very dynamic looking dashboard in terms of all of your graphs now correctly reflecting what they're filtered by, even on the different cases. Okay, and the final thing I want to quickly show you is building an info box. So in this one here, in the original version, uh, my master one, uh, we had this little info box here. And when you click it, it just has a short little blurb here. It says information guide, use the filters to change the outputs. If no year is selected, it will f reflect all the data in the data table. Uh, and then they can click it again and it goes away. So how do we do something like that? It's very similar to how we did our base case, upside case and downside case buttons and macros in the first video. So if you want to learn how to do those, go have a look at my first video. But we'll also do something similar here with the info button. So if I come back to my main dashboard and go insert, 
I'm going to insert an icon. It's going to equal, I'm going to look up information. Uh, and I'll use this icon here, which is the one I used in my last one. Maybe you can use a question mark or something if you wanted to. Or you could have like a settings cog. And I'll insert that. And I'm going to duplicate it. And one's going to be white. And one's going to be this blue color, which means that it's on. So I'll find that. And that's that color there. And I'll make them both a bit smaller. Maybe something a little bit bigger. Just so it stands out a little bit. And then this one here is going to be our off button. So if we go to format, selection pane, we can name the graphic again. So this will be info off. And this one here will be info on. And then what else do I want? I want to create a shape that's going to have my text show up when you click that button. So if we go to insert shape, and I'll choose one of these uh, callouts down here, maybe like this one. And maybe we have something like this. And maybe it comes off my information button like this. And I'm going to fill it. I want it white, but I want it to be transparent. So I'll come in here and maybe we'll make it 50% transparent. Okay, maybe it needs to be a little bit more. No outline, of course. So maybe 35%. It looks okay. So now I'll put some text in it. So information guide. There we go. And I'll make the text maybe dark blue like this. So maybe it needs to be a little bit more transparent. A little bit less transparent, sorry. So maybe 25%. Just so it doesn't get confused with what's underneath it and maybe I'll make it wider like this maybe these don't need to be bold maybe that's not underlined and it might be bigger okay so maybe that's how I want my information guide to pop up but I want it to pop up when you click the button. So we'll name this as well by going to Format Selection Pane. And I'll call it Info Box. So now we've got our three shapes named. Uh, we just need to assign a macro to the on and off buttons. So I'll show you how to do that now. We come to the Developer tab and we can go to Visual Basic by clicking this. And it will bring up this window here. Or you can hit Alt F11. And that will bring it up as well. That's the keyboard shortcut. So if we come back to the modules that we were working in last week. We have all our macros. Our very basic macros too by the way. Don't be afraid of VBA. That we use to change our different selections. So we're going to create a new one which is going to be a bit similar. Uh, I'll just use this piece here of the code. And we're going to create a new one. And we'll go in sub. So now we've got a new one. And I'll call this info box on. And we only have three shapes in this instance. So I can get rid of these ones. And I'll have info on. Info off. And info box with the three names. So when you click the info on button, I want the on button to be on, which is true. I want my off button to be off, and I want the, my info box to be visible. And then we'll do the reverse for off. So copy paste that macro again. We'll change this to off. And then we just need to flip all these signs to be opposite. Cool, now I've got info box off and info box on. Let's go assign them and test them. So I'll right click it. So when you click this, I want it to turn blue. So this is the off button. So it needs to have the on macro. And I'll assign info box on to this macro. So now when you click it, it disappears. It did what it needed to. So I'll bring this over here. 
and I need to line it up with my off. So I'll line these up and I'll P A A M. So now they're in between in the middle of each other. And then we will assign the other macro, the off macro, to the off button. And now when you click that, it goes away. So you click on, click off. Except this seems to be slightly smaller. So I'll just check the height of this, 1.1 and 1.22. So 1.22, 1.22. Don't know why that happened. Don't want to lock this. I want it to be 1.22. Now we can lock it. And then if I click it, okay, so they're slightly out of a line. So if I turn this button on, oops, right click it to move it. And then we'll line them up like this. So now we can click it on off. Get rid of this. And now we've got a working info box. And you can move this around if you need to, wherever you want to, and move this. And then each time you click it on and off, you'll have your info box. So that's all I wanted to show you guys today. A uh, shorter, shorter video to finish off our modern looking dashboard. Uh, if you found this useful, please share it with someone else who might find it useful. And um, don't forget to like and subscribe my page um, and I'll start bringing out more videos like this that I can help you guys become a bit more creative and efficient in Excel. Hope you learned something and until next time, thank you all. See ya.